So, you want a natural grass putting green in your backyard, but you have some questions. Can it be done? How do I do it? What do I need? What's it gonna cost? How much time is it gonna take me? What can I expect? Well, boy, can I tell you, you're in the right place. Let's walk all the way through how we have putting greens in our backyard. So right up front, I wanna go through, there is a myriad of expectations for what you can do and what you can have. And I wanna walk through each one of these, what they're gonna cost you and what you can expect. Anywhere from, you're just gonna take your rotary mower, set it to the lowest setting, and have a little slightly shorter cut area in your backyard as a target, as, as a chipping area. Or you can graduate into one of the cheaply available manual reel mowers. From there, you can graduate into a more expensive, nicer manual reel mower. And that's gonna be the first stage where you really start to get into uh, putting green performance. And then you can graduate all the way to what's back behind me right there and get yourself a used true greens mower. And that's when you're really gonna start to have some fun. So. I want to walk through all the way from existing rotary mower all the way through what you can do with a USGA style construction putting green. What all those steps look like in, in between, what my experience is, and how you can do this yourself. So let's first answer the question, where? That wasn't a question I asked in the beginning, but let's first ask the, answer the question, where do I put it in my yard? You're probably not gonna want it to be in the middle, right? Because you need to your, your use your yard. So here's kind of a, just a pan around my backyard. We got it and then tucked away in a nice little spot in the back here. And it's, it's in a good spot. I like where it is, it's out of the way. The next thing is you're gonna want something that isn't too sloped. I am almost on too steep of a slope here. And in the camera, in the camera I'm sure it looks dead flat, but there's a little bit of slope there and the balls will kind of run off the front as I've gotten to lower mowing heights. The next consideration I would give that I didn't ask in the beginning is size. Size matters. What I mean here is you don't want something too small. What you're seeing behind me is about 500 square feet. It's the better part of about like 17 by 25 or something like that, 17 by 27, it's somewhere around there. That's a decent size. I think if given an opportunity to do it again, I would go a little bit bigger because who doesn't want a little bigger? Just because if I'm out here for a long time, you really only have about a 15 to 20 foot putt at maximum. And with that, it will start to get a little bit boring as time goes on. So I would say somewhere about maybe a thousand square feet, I would consider about perfect. The other thing is you don't wanna to go too big. There does become a, a size where it's gonna be problematic for you to manage because at 500 square feet, top dressing, mowing, aerating, applications, everything is cheap to do and it doesn't take very much time. So the amount of sand that you need is lower. The amount of fertilizer, materials, etc., time, everything that you need is much lower when the size is smaller. The difference and the reason why we can do this in our backyards without the qualifications of a greenskeeper, without the crew time hours of a golf course is we have one green and it's very small. As opposed to 18, three to 5,000 square foot putting greens, we have one 500 to 1,000 square feet. So that's important. Don't get carried away with the size, but also don't make it too small that it's unusable. So like I mentioned, the first option is just slam your rotary mower all the way down, find the flattest, least bumpy section of your yard, somewhere that it's gonna work, um, and just have at it and, and see. And it'll serve as a place to chip, chip balls to, um, just kind of a fun thing if you wanna do something like that. Give yourself a target and it'll roll a little quicker than the rest of your yard. Next up is one of these guys here. So this is a five blade, great states manual reel mower that I picked up from Home Depot for about $80. However, at any point, you can pick up one of these on Marketplace, they're all over the place for 10 to 40 bucks and you can get yourself started. However, with that guy, you're limited, the lowest that will go is a half inch. Now, I have footage of myself putting with my son. We still use this putting green back here when it was cut at a half inch, but it's not going to roll like a putting green. That doesn't mean you can't use it, that doesn't mean it isn't fun, you're just not there yet. So let's talk about what you're gonna need and what it's gonna cost you to be in that uh, Great States, Sun Joe, Greenworks, Earthwise, any of those real mowers you can pick up anywhere from like 20 bucks on Facebook Marketplace used all the way through like $130, $140 for the larger, nicer ones. So what do you need to have for turf grass to pull off a putting green? And we're gonna put it in quotation marks at this, at this point still, at this height. Well, I'd say the grass in your backyard right now 
is going to work just fine. You don't need to add anything. Just scalp it down, start mowing it every, every two days with one of these manual reels at a half inch, and it's going to do just fine for you. And that's it. You can just manage it on the same fertilizer program that you have on the rest of your yard and it will do just fine. The only additional expense you might need is you might want to grab maybe like one sand top dress and you can go to your local hardware store. You can get play sand, although I wouldn't recommend it because that tends to be pretty rocky. I would recommend if you can find somewhere that will have masonry sand. Get yourself probably 10 to 15 bags depending on the size that you have and just give it one top dress to get it a little bit smoother so that your lawnmower at that height isn't scalping too badly you can just use your normal rakes that you have to make that work if you have just a hard tine regular landscaping rake and that'll be good enough and you'll have yourself a nice little target area you can grab yourself a couple golf tees from your golf bag put those in the ground get out there with your kids and just have a good time so we're already into only step two with one of these higher blade, higher quality, walk behind manual reel mowers. And you can do this with the Swordmans and Allets and probably McLean's and True Cuts of the World too if you wanna graduate into that powered space as well, it's gonna be about the same. But I'm sticking to as cheap as possible to get into one of these nicer level walk behind manual reel mowers. Now that McLean that I have that I showed you has 10 blades and it will go down to 3 16ths of an inch. Now I'm currently cutting at 3 16ths of an inch and let me tell you that is absolutely short enough to have a true putting green surface. So even at this phase, you have enough and you've done enough or you can start to have something that really acts like a putting green in your backyard. So grass types for this. Now we've probably eliminated turf type tall fescue and we need to be either warm season zoysia or Bermuda or cool season we need to be into rye, Kentucky bluegrass or ideally you'd have bent grass. I'm still gonna say if you have a cool season blend, you can get down to quarter inch maybe with rye and bluegrass. It's gonna be tough, but I still don't know if you need to be overseeding with bent grass. That would be ideal if you can, but that's gonna be an added cost. If you do go with bent grass seed, you can go anywhere from Amazon has a one pound bag, at least, at least that I bought for about 15 or 20 bucks or something like that. And then you can get into a one pound bag of pen cross, which would be a little bit nicer. And then all the way up through like Seed Superstore used to have a bent grass variety that was like $200 for five pounds or something. So there's a huge amount of variance and investment in terms of the turf that you can make here. I would say stay cheap. I've stayed cheap, it's working just fine. What tools do you need? So I would say once you get to this part, you need to have a bigger rake. You can still get away with a landscape rake if you want. That's what I did for a long time. I just used a 36 inch regular landscape rake that you go pick up at Home Depot. They're about 50, $55. So you have your manual reel. If you can find one on Marketplace, I bought mine for $150. I've seen them for $200-ish, a couple different options. And that's gonna be a good place to enter into and see is this something that you can really manage? And you're still not in for a huge investment, maybe $200, $300 with sand and a little bit of seed and the mower and a rake. So $300, you're in to having a, a putting green that will function in your backyard that you can go out and, and practice on and have a good time with your family, your kids. Nice conversation piece with your family and friends when you have them over to visit. I will say when you do get into this, you're gonna have to do a couple of top dresses because your lawn needs to be very, very, very flat in order to be able to mow at that height. So last season I did four uh, thin layer sand top dresses. And that got me to a pretty good place where I was able to, to cut it at that low mow height. So now we're into the final phase. You wanna get very, very serious about this and you've caught the bug. You've started out and you followed along step by step and you're like, I can do this. I wanna be all in. So with that, then we're getting into buying used greens mower equipment. I would highly recommend a true leveling rake, either making yourself with one of the DIY videos that are out there or buy one. Probably gonna need some way to aerate from time to time. You're gonna need a good store of sand to be top dressing periodically. So this is, we're all out, we're all in. We need to have all of these pieces of equipment available to us, greens mower, either Jacobson, John Deere, or Toro. I personally would recommend going Toro or John Deere as Jacobson has been known to have some reliability issues, including my own Jacobson. And we're gonna be getting down USGA spec putting green. What does it mean? That means that you dig down about 18 inches and you put in 18 inches of USGA approved root zone mix and you have drainage and you do all these things. Have I done that? No. Do you need to do that? No, but it would help. So what I've been doing instead is I've gone through and aerated at least once or twice and 
backfilled in the aerate holes with sand to kind of try to help my soil composition get a little bit more breathable, a little better, more suited for putting greens. But even that I would say you don't need to do. So what's the time aspect now? Well, every day I come out here, I sweep off the worm castings with my level rake and I mow the yard. I do that every single day. About five, 10 minutes at absolute most. And then every so often you're gonna do an aerate, you're gonna do a top dress at the size of area that we're dealing with. It's gonna take you about an hour and that's all you need. So daily, five to 10 minutes, maybe once a month, you have a, some project that's gonna take you an hour. What's that gonna cost? Well, a uh, used greens mower can go anywhere from $300 if you're really lucky like myself and some other people out there, all the way up to $12,000, $13,000 new. A good used one is going to be about $2,500 to $3,500. So you can plan that investment accordingly. Those level rakes are about $115. Um, in addition, now you see I have a flag and a cup in mine. For that, cup, flag, and flag stick were about $50. The cutter I used to cut the hole is about $140. And then I bought a cup puller, which was like seven bucks or something, just to help me get that cup out. Because once the, the turf starts to kind of fold in on that, on that cup in the ground, it gets actually very difficult to get out. So I'd recommend something like that. So what do I want to leave you with today? Well, I want to leave you with some confidence. I'm not a licensed turf care professional. I don't really know what I'm doing, and yet, decent conditioned putting green at 3 16ths of an inch. Now what haven't I talked about yet is expectations for when you're all in. Now, I have only used cheaply sourced Amazon bent grass seed. And really once we get down to this height, you're gonna need bent grass or some sort of Bermuda. Those are about the only options. So you need to have that. And it's not gonna be thick. I can show you up close, this is not thick, it's not filled in yet. Granted, it is April, but it's not there yet. It will creep, it will fill in, and it'll get there, but it's gonna take a lot of time. Don't, just because you started a month or two ago, you know, start to get discouraged, I'm not gonna be able to do this. It's gonna take a year or two. They say putting greens are not matured for at least like three to five years, and that's on a golf course with people taking care of them that know what they're doing. This is gonna take time to get to, to something that is really, really nice in your backyard that you're managing. However, fairly quickly, you can get something usable. And that's what I think is, is really encouraging. You can have something usable, something halfway decent, and not a whole lot of time. I started this project last July 1st. It's currently April 27th of the following year. So get out there. You can do this, I promise. This is not something that's overly difficult. You can either go the cheap entry, space and just have something that's kind of fun for your family to kick around on chip around on hit some putts whatever it's not going to be nice but it'll be fine it'll be kind of fun to have i enjoyed having it when we were in that stage all the way through i promise you you can do this you can have a real grass putting green in your backyard without a huge investment in time money difficulty, effort, anything like that. So I hope this is helpful. This is a very, very broad spectrum topic, so there's no chance that I've covered everything, every question, every whatever that you can have. I'm gonna continue to follow along with this on my channel, what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, why I'm doing it. So if you want more information, you can subscribe to the channel, follow along, and you can also leave your comments, questions below. Maybe let me know if you've tried this. How is it going for you? How is it working? Like the video if it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.